Hey everybody, it's Alana Owlette and I'm here today with another close up look at one of my costumes. I kind of have had fun filming these videos and looking at some of the costumes I've made and kind of sharing how I made them. So the one today I've chosen is clearly the worst costume in the world to film in my craft room because it is beautifully camouflaged against my wall and you cannot see any of it so, you know. But <laughs> it's actually my Clefairy costume that I made. And this was based on an illustration by Cowslip, where she's done a lot of really beautiful fashion illustrations of Pokemon. I just thought it was really, really pretty when I saw it. And I actually, this costume has kind of a special place in my heart, because this is sort of the first costume I made that, like, I actually worked hard on, if that makes sense. Like, I actually tried to put a lot of detail and creativity into it and a lot of effort. I made this maybe six years ago, sounds about right, probably about six years ago, maybe seven years ago. But anyway, it was the first one I made where I was actually like, I'm gonna work hard on this. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, why am I not doing that with all my costumes? So this kind of like kickstarted off everything about how I work today. So it's kind of special. So the pattern I used for it was McCall's 6646, and I obviously altered it a lot. This is just like a little cocktail dress. But the big, I made it essentially the same way it is on the pattern, but I put some elastic around the bottom to really give it that poof. These parts right here, I'll work up to my favorite part, which is the, the flowers, but right here it was actually a ribbon, and I folded a ribbon over the top as a bias tape too, just because I wanted it to look kind of really fancy and sparkly. The rest of this fabric is all, you guys know, I'm obsessed with like the Casa collection at Joann's, but you can get all different types of fabric in the same color. So I was able to get like a sparkly, kind of glittery fabric for the dress, this tool, and like a super, super sheer glittery one for the flowers. So that was kind of really convenient with this. So they're all the same color and it goes really well together. So when I made it, I made the whole dress. Like I said, this was kind of my first big project, so I didn't actually know how to use boning or anything. Um, the dress design itself does not have this like second strap, it's just got one strap with the flowers. And at the time I was like, mm, I don't know how to make something strapless, so I'm just gonna add this, which I think is fine. It doesn't distract from it or anything. I think it looks fine on there. For the sort of shape of the tail up here, I just twisted a big amount of tool, I guess like a yard, and sort of spiraled it in and hand sewed it, and then added all these beads draping around, which I like a lot. And the sort of feathery shapes are also just sheer fabric that are over the top. My very favorite part though is all these flowers. I cannot even tell you how much time I spent on these flowers. I wish I'd recorded how much time it was. At the time I was making this in our apartment, I lived in an apartment, so I wasn't able to use like a soldering iron because if I was doing this now, like all these sheer kind of polyester things, I would just cut them out with a soldering iron and it'll kind of melt when it's a synthetic fabric, especially like this tool. It'll melt the edges and keep it from unraveling, but I couldn't do that because we had like a really sensitive fire alarm that was always going off and I didn't have a soldering iron. So I cut all of them out and actually ran a thin layer of fabric glue around the edge of every single one of these petals so they wouldn't unravel. It took a really long time, but it came out so great. I really think it was worth taking the time to do that. And I think it's also a good example of sort of problem solving with the situation you have, right? Like now, yeah, of course I can do it a fancier way, but at the time I couldn't, and instead of just being like, well, they're just gonna look crummy, I was like, well, what can I do based on sort of what I have to work with? And that's how I did it, so I really liked it. All these flowers are individually pieced together with all the, the petals, and then they've got beads in them as well, so they're all beaded, and they kind of alternate, so you can see they stretch all over here. There's like definitely hundreds of petals going down the back, and I really liked the back too. You can't see it in the illustration, but I kind of liked extending the petals around like this. So I just, that's my favorite part. It's one of my favorite like things I've made is this strap. I just really, really like it. It looks really cool in person. I don't know how well it's reading on the camera, but in person it's just like so three-dimensional and so fun to look at. I just really, really love it. And then there's more beads going here, and then I just use the same beads to make the necklace. There are also these little armbands she's got. They just have elastic. They just have a little bit of elastic in the top, and I can just put them on. Here we go. Excuse me. While I put this on my arm, and they just slide on there. So that's how that is. So they just stay on because they've got the elastic on there, and kind of more flowers and beading. And it was just like a really nice little touch. The shoes, actually, the shoes are the reason I didn't get the shoes out. I should have got the shoes out, but they're like somewhere else. The shoes are kind of the reason I made this whole costume. The shoes I used for this were the shoes I wore for my wedding, and they were really expensive because they're wedding shoes, but they're really cool. They're these like giant pink heels, and I was like, 
I would like a reason to wear these again, having spent all this money on them. So I saw this and I was like, hey, she's got my shoes on. That's the one I'm gonna make. So that was kind of the excuse. So that's what I used for the shoes. The wig that I used was from Ardo Wigs. It was a Magnum Classic in light pink. And then I also got two hair buns in the same light pink color. I sewed the hair buns onto the wig and then got two styrofoam cones from the craft store and hot glued those on top of the hair buns to give them the shape I wanted for the Clefairy ears and just wrapped them in brown ribbon and hot glued that in place and then also curled one little end of it to have the little curl on the forehead. I think it came out really cool. This is one of my favorite wigs that I've done. It's just super fun. It's really cute. And because I used the styrofoam, it was really lightweight, so it was not heavy at all to wear. It wasn't like a big ordeal to have it on my head. It was super comfy. So I really, really love how that wig came out. So that's this costume. I feel like it's kind of simple, but I wanted to talk about it again specifically because I think it's a great example of you know, it's nice to see like where people come from. I love seeing people post costumes where they're like, this is the reason I do this. So this is kind of the culprit for why I'm like, let's be stupidly extravagant with all the details I put into things. And again, it's also, I did a few like little problem solving things here that now I wouldn't have to worry about, but instead of giving up, I was sort of creative with it. So that is how I made this costume. I love it. Maybe I'll wear it again one day. I really do like this costume a lot and I just haven't worn it. So if you have any other questions about it, please let me know and I'll be back with more videos soon.